Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at applications of inequalities. So we're going to write and solve inequalities from word problems and real world situations. So less than, some other words that can mean less than are not as much, fewer than, smaller than, below, or under. Anything like that means less than, so you would use the less than symbol. All right, greater than, some other words that mean greater than are more than, larger than, bigger than, over, or above. Any of those words or similar words, you're going to use the greater than sign. Then less than or equal to, it's similar to less than, but it could also be equal to. So that's going to change some things. So fewer or the same, at most, maximum, since maximum could be equal to or everything below it, and not greater than. Any of those words, you're going to use the less than or equal to sign. And then greater than or equal to, some words that mean that are at least, that is a big one. You might want to put a star by that. Minimum, no less than, no fewer than. Any of those mean greater than or equal to. So we will look for those words whenever we are reading the problems. It says Javier has $500 in his checking account. He must keep a minimum of $50 in his account in order to avoid low balance fees. His Netflix bill costs him $15 a month. Write and solve an inequality to determine how many months Javier can pay for his Netflix bill with the money in his checking account before he incurs charges. So Javier has $500 he's going to be paying for Netflix and he wants to keep a minimum of $50 in his account. And then the question says how many months can he pay for his bill? So the question usually tells us what the variable is going to be since that's the missing item. And it does here. How many months? That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to let M be the number of months here. And now that I define my variable, I should be able to write an inequality to represent this situation. So we need the money in his checking account to be a minimum of $50. So if it's greater than $50, that's okay. Or if it's equal to $50, that's okay too. So now let's write a statement for how much money he has in his checking account. Well, he starts out with 500. And then each month, his Netflix bill is going to cost him $15 a month. So I'm going to subtract 15M. So that shows me how much is going to be in his checking account based on the number of months. And we want that to be greater than or equal to 50. So there is our inequality. Now let's solve it to figure out how many months he can pay for Netflix with this $500. So the first thing I need to do is subtract 500. And I get negative 15M is greater than or equal to negative 450. And then I'm going to divide by negative 15. And since I'm dividing by a negative, I'm going to flip the inequality sign. And negative 450 divided by negative 15 is 30. So this means he can pay for... 30 months or less. All right, let's look at two. Amy is knitting scarves to sell at a local craft fair. The supplies and her fee for the booth at the craft fair cost her $175. If she already has $49 from the last craft fair and she sells her scarves for $7 each, how many scarves does she need to sell in order to make at least enough money to pay for the supplies and booth fee? Write and solve an inequality. So let's figure out the missing thing that we're going to define our variable as. It tells us how many scarves does she need to sell? That's what we are looking for. So I'm going to let X, I'm not going to use S because sometimes my S's look like a five. I'm just going to let X be the number of scarves here. So let's see if we can write an inequality for this now. We want the money that she makes. It needs to be at least seven, $175. 
because she wants to make at least enough to pay for the supplies and booth fee. And her supplies and booth fee cost her $175. So we want her money to be greater than or equal to $175. So she already has $49. And then she's going to add onto that by selling her scarves for $7 each. So it'll be plus 7x. And we want to know when that's going to be greater than or equal to 175. So here's the inequality. Let's go ahead and solve it. Now I'm going to subtract 49. And I get 7x is greater than or equal to 175 minus 49 is 126. And then I'm going to divide by 7. And 126 divided by 7 is 18. So that means she needs to sell at least 18 scarves in order to make the same or more than 175. Okay, number three, Emma is looking for a frozen yogurt shop with the best deals. Froyo's cost 50 cents plus 15 cents per ounce. Very cool yogurts cost 10 cents plus 25 cents per ounce. Write and solve an inequality to determine after how many ounces Froyo's will cost less than very cool yogurts. So I need to define my variable first. And the missing thing we're looking for is how many ounces of frozen yogurt. So I'm going to use X and let that equal the number of ounces of yogurt. So let's figure out how to set up our inequality. We want to know when Froyo's will be less than Berry Cool. And they just use less than, so it's this symbol, Berry Cool. So let's write a statement for Froyo's. Froyo's cost 50 cents plus 15 cents per ounce. So it would be 0.50 plus 0.15 x since it's 15 cents per ounce and we want to know when that's less than berry cool berry cool is 10 cents plus 25 cents per ounce so that'll be 0.10 plus 0.25 x okay now let's figure out what x is so we can determine the number of ounces when froyo's will cost less than berry cool so i have variables on both sides i'm going to subtract 0.15x from both sides. And I get 0.50 is less than 0.10 plus 0.25x minus 0.15x is 0.10x. Okay, now I'm going to subtract 0.10 and I get 0.40 is less than 0.10x. Now I'm going to divide by 0.10 and 0.40 divided by 0.10 is four. So four is less than x. And if you want to flip it and write x is greater than four, you could as well. So that means after four ounces that Froyo's would be cheaper. All right, number four. Peyton and Garrett went trick-or-treating for Halloween together. Peyton ended up with 96 pieces of candy and Garrett ended up with 84 pieces of candy. Peyton will eat three pieces of candy a day and Garrett will eat two pieces of candy a day. Write and solve an inequality to determine after how many days Garrett will have more pieces of candy remaining than Garrett. So the missing thing that we are looking for is how many days of eating this candy. So I'm gonna use the variable D to represent the number of days. Okay, and let's figure out how to set up our inequality. 
We are wanting to know after how many days Garrett will have more pieces than Peyton. So we want to know when Garrett is going to be more than Peyton. So let's write a statement for each of them. It says Garrett ended up with 84 pieces. And Garrett will eat two pieces a day. So we're going to take away two per day. And I want to know when that's greater than Peyton. Peyton ended up with 96 pieces. And Peyton is going to eat three pieces a day. So we'll take away three a day. All right, now let's solve this inequality to figure out what day Garrett will have more pieces of candy than Peyton. So I'm going to add 3D to both sides. And I get 84 plus D is greater than 96. And then I'm going to subtract 84. So D is greater than 96 minus 84 is 12. So that means after 12 days, Garrett will have more.